Breaking news into the CBS 13 newsroom, the Raiders have fired head coach Josh McDaniels and general manager Dave Ziegler this evening. None of us said Frank Reich was the right guy to get hired in Carolina. No, no way. Okay. We're all very baffled by it. Yep. We're all very confused by it. And the team now has just confirmed the report that the uh, Chargers have fired their head coach and their general manager. Change is coming. This is a phrase that can be applied to a lot of NFL teams in any given offseason, but one of the most important parts of a few teams' offseason every year is finding a new leader to coach their team. Today we're going to cover the teams I believe will be looking for a new head coach and who I personally am predicting to be picked to lead these respective teams. Starting off with a team who's perhaps the biggest dumpster fire in football right now, we have the Carolina Panthers, and this season went about as bad as it gets for an NFL team. As of Week 17, they only have two wins on the year, and while that would normally at least mean they'd get a pretty good draft pick, that doesn't even apply as the Chicago Bears own the Panthers' first-round draft pick this year because of the Bryce Young trade. Speaking of Bryce Young, he wasn't very good this year. Partially, he really struggled on his own right, but he's surrounded with one of the worst supporting casts in the league. There are pieces to work with in Carolina, but with the number one pick this year belonging to Chicago and owner David Tepper often being too interfering with both on and off the field issues, the question begs, which coach would want to take this job? Well, that's where David Tepper being the second richest owner in the NFL comes in. Tepper is absolutely aware that he needs a great coach to come in with something new and innovative to not only win games, but to help Bryce Young return the investment they asked for when they drafted him. And I think with Ben Johnson supposedly asking for around or above $15 million a year, Carolina might be the only place he'll actually get that. He certainly fits what Carolina needs, as his Detroit offenses have been amazing to watch since he took control, and recruiting him would go a long way for the Carolina offense. And if he could convince Ahiro Evero to stick around as their defensive coordinator, that'd be another win to the upcoming Panthers offseason. Next up, we go out west to Los Angeles, where the Brandon Staley era has come to a close. In my opinion, the defense in Staley's coaching style was the downfall of the Chargers, because I do think Justin Herbert and Kellen Moore's offense can absolutely get the job done, but it's hard to win games when your defense is plain and simply not getting the job done in most games. I believe the Chargers will stick with defensive head coach to let Kellen Moore keep control of the offense. The obstacle with Los Angeles looking for a new head coach is that Dean Spanos, their owner, is notoriously cheap when bringing in new talent of any kind. Their choices may be limited, but that's why I think Brian Flores makes sense. Flores should be a head coach. I believe he proved that in Miami, and unique circumstances led to his firing. But in just one year, he showed the elite defensive mind that he is in Minnesota. Not every team is going to want Flores as a result of the lawsuit he filed against the NFL and a few other teams not too long ago. But not too many coaches are going to want the Chargers, and I think that creates a perfect marriage of a guy who could come in and fix what's wrong with Los Angeles to finally get them over the hump they've been stuck on in the Justin Herbert era. There's an interesting conversation to be had in Las Vegas at the moment as the Josh McDaniels tenure came to a disastrous end, not that the rest of it wasn't disastrous, but since McDaniels was fired, the Raiders have gone 4-4 four four, with two of those losses being by one score. They've been a different team under Antonio Pierce, especially their defense, which has been making some big-time plays, and while their offense hasn't been elite with Aiden O'Connell, it's been good enough depending on the week. While the movement to keep Pierce is passionate and understandable, I don't believe they'll lean that way. The last time an interim staying as the head coach of a team really worked out was 2016 with Doug Marone on the Jaguars, and before that was 2010 with Jason Garrett and the Cowboys. The Raiders have also shown they don't really like keeping good interim head coaches previously with Rich Masaccia. This leads me to Raheem Morris, who funnily enough was an interim head coach in 2020 for the Atlanta Falcons where he went 4-7. Morris has been a head coach previously from 2009 to 2011 for the Buccaneers, where despite one good 10-6 and six year, his time there wasn't very successful. However, Morris has worked on some very good defenses throughout the years, and he's done a great job as the defensive coordinator in LA for the Rams, who won a Super Bowl with the help of his defense. He elevates his players, and he's shown that he can win while being in charge of a team. The Raiders are entering an interesting period, but I think if they can bring in an excellent defensive mind who players really like, and someone who has connections to some great young coaches through the McVay tree, I think it would be a win for Las Vegas. He 
He may have survived the season, but Week 18 will be the last week coaching the 4-12 Washington Commanders for Ron Rivera. I'd be lying if I said I knew why he was still their head coach at the beginning of this year. They may have made the playoffs year one and back in 2020 in a fluky NFC East, but since then it's been nothing but mediocrity or worse in D.C. The defenses haven't been anything spectacular, and they've struggled to develop some of their early draft picks. The offense is in a better place right now, but not by much. Their offensive line took a massive step backwards, and their only reliable weapon, Terry McLaurin, took a slight step back, despite Eric Bieniemy being brought in to rejuvenate the offense. The goal was slightly achieved, as Sam Howell looked okay most of the year, but ultimately, he is not the answer. I don't think Bieniemy will get a head coaching job this year or anytime soon, as every team that interviews him seems to shy away from him. Whether that's because he reportedly doesn't get along with people very well or because they just don't view him as a head coach is another discussion, but he should be here for the long run in Washington. This once again leads me to believe they'll be looking for a defensive head coach, and one of the hottest names in defensive coaching right now is Mike McDonald of the Baltimore Ravens. John Harbaugh brought him up from Michigan, and it took no time at all for McDonald to craft an elite defense. Baltimore has some playmakers for sure, but I think we're witnessing a new type of defense for McDonald that's going to garner interest from multiple teams. Washington needs a reset, and the defense needs help. Mike is a young, smart riser in the coaching world that would be the first move under new ownership to start taking steps towards a better future in D.C. Last but definitely not least, like I began the video, change is coming. That really can't apply more to any other team than the New England Patriots. Since the Brady era ended in 2019, the Patriots have yet to win their division. They've only had a winning record and made the playoffs once, and their decline continues to get worse. Belichick is still a solid coach, but his coaching style is outdated, his defenses are no longer atop the league's best, and he refuses to bring in coaches he hasn't coached with before, leading to stale and repeated offenses. As GM, he's made very few moves that have actually improved the team through trades, free agency, or the draft. The team is devoid of any elite talent, and honestly, it's just time to move on. He's the longest tenured head coach in football with 23 years, and he had the best run ever by a head coach, but it's time for something new. That's where Frank Smith comes in. Smith has been coaching in the NFL for a while now, but it's only recently that he's been truly highlighted as a top-tier head coach candidate due to the brutally dominant Miami offense. Mike McDaniel is the new hot thing for NFL offenses, and Frank Smith would be expected to bring that style and the scheme over with him, and for a team who needs something new, he makes a lot of sense. He's young, he's learned from a lot of good NFL coaches, and New England has taken a stab here, hoping to repeat some type of the same success Miami's offense has had with their abysmal one, and Frank would be the first step in that. Let me know your predictions for who will be coaching for where next year in the comments below, and thanks for watching.